Man, we are so ahead of schedule. Yeah, <clears throat> that's great. <laughs> How are you feeling? Cool. Good, good. Uh, what I'm thinking, uh, get Tyler, set up a conversation with Tyler. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know if I have that kind of WASTA yet, but uh, I think applying for the grant is should be first. <laughs> Um, yeah, but I'm saying like, and you don't think we can catch them on the phone? Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it may be worth a shot. He's a pretty, he, he's got high profile. Uh, I suppose like I'm not that far from him in DC. I could just knock on his door at his office at, uh, at George Mason. Uh, how far is that from you? Uh, probably about 30, 40 minutes. Does he have office hours? Uh, probably for students only. Although I'm sure he's not super rigid. Um, yeah, it's always a balancing act because you don't. It's like you're applying for this grant, uh, but and he has this pipeline already open to receive information related to it. So if I bypass that, I don't know. I would say submit mm -hmm. the application first and see if he gives you a call. And uh, what if we ask Brian? Yeah, I mean that's overstepping it. No, I mean, I, I think That's, he seems he seems amenable to collaborate. So, you know. Um, do you want to try ask Brian for that in? Just to, just either like ask him outright, hey, can we talk to, or see what he says. Just or I'll just maybe maybe they know each other. You know, they they've got a good rapport, and he'd be like, oh yeah, just he pointed to us so that we have a better chance. Yeah, I would. Uh... Let me think about it. Let me think about it. Or but Why don't look, you do like, just that. You don't have to go through me, man. If you like, you've got Brian's email now. And if that's the conversation mm. you want to have with him, uh, I may just be a middleman for that. I mean, my, my gut says that you you can uh, you can include our conversation as one of the supporting documents, or like a link to. Like we can have a link sheet where we say like, we've already spoken to Brian Potter, a previous EV winner, you know, um, that's another option. Yeah. Okay. Sounds cool. Let's publish this and um, uh, do we have his, yeah. Okay. Not to mention the, I mean, like <clears throat> it would be a multifaceted or as we like to call a um, combined arms attack. So, right. Like what we're going to submit the grant, uh, we can include, the recording we have Brian Potter, uh, we can tag EV and Tyler on social media during the release of that. Um, yeah, yeah. A, lot of, a lot of different avenues. Um, okay, so I, I'm i guessing, you know, you've been focusing on the house and everything. I'm not sure there's a whole lot of ground to cover because uh, I haven't seen the next draft of the EV and we're still executing previous week's priorities. Uh, what do you want to talk about? Do you want to reflect a little bit on the conversation you just had with Brian or is there something else? Yeah, for Brian, it's uh, let's see what what his thoughts are. I can't can't say much right now, I guess. Don't have anything specific. I um, I'm curious how how much he buys into open culture to do that. It sounds like whatever they're doing might be proprietary in terms of the technology itself because nobody works open openly today on hardware but let's just wait what what he has to say if, if he might be inspired to go more open on a tech there definitely would be a collaboration potential more collaboration potential otherwise it's you know you know the exact same thing which you're trying to to resolve and that is how do you get everybody to collaborate because this problem is bigger than any one one group or person can solve so sure <clears throat> um, I mean, I get the sense from his writing that there's this open question of like, how are you going to innovate in the construction industry, period. And we don't necessarily have to be competing with anybody else to prove that it is possible to innovate, which may be interesting to him just for that reason. Yeah, we don't have, well, of course, we know that, but the question is, the, the more proactive statement is how do you get everybody to collaborate? That's the that's the golden jewel. Well, you, I mean, I think, I think the story that we're going to tell with the success of the first build is 
look how successful it was with traditional metrics of like the financial success, the success to the labor force. And, yeah. you know, oh, by the way, it was also done completely open source and anybody has access to this model. Oh, yeah. And that's that's just going to be so beautiful. Well, yeah, because you've already you've already proven that uh, it's tough, even when you have a good idea that works to get people to buy into it. And so, you know, I oh, yeah, I guess. For, and more generally speaking, any innovation in history is, is met with resistance. So we're not going to get any love before we actually get traction. That's but, the but, thing. That's but yeah, but I'm referring to the fact that at the end of the day, it's still hard work. It's still being outside you know, working with tools. And that alone is a filter, I think, for some people. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's an interesting point. Like, you know, the more I go into that, I thought it would be kind of natural for people to actually work. But these days, nobody wants to work. Right. <laughs> I think I think we can change that. I think we are changing that. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's like, literally, like people have the choice to be anywhere. Well, if people are aware, they can have a choice. And even I was thinking, it's like, well, wait, why am I out, out there busting my balls in the cold? Uh, why shouldn't I be an investor? Or some, so it's like, if you open up your mind, you can say that, okay, any of these realms is possible. But at the end of the day, you got to really ask yourself what makes really good sense and also is, you know, actual progress for humanity, you know? <laughs> and then I, that's where I think, yeah, just uh, some real work is part of meaning and and progress for society too that that's i don't think that's going to go away ever <clears throat> i it like if i imagine a graph where the x-axis is work or excuse me the x-axis is a sense of purpose and the y-axis is manual labor like the army exists in the top right corner <laughs> you know and so i think if you bring that sense of purpose of like you're solving a serious problem and it fulfills you personally i think people's willingness to endure goes up and that that to me is a big missing ingredient right now with a lot of the jobs out there because i mean there a lot there's plenty of bullshit jobs yeah and even but look at the learnings from the apprenticeship too we had people who were so-called driven by purpose but they burned out a lot of them so right. that's balance. an interesting one so, balance, so that ba is balancing act though right because the, the yeah the creature comforts weren't that great either Yeah, but uh, when but I will also note that before we had running water and hot water, the complaints were identical. Nothing has changed on that front. Uh, OK, can you believe that. Yeah, I can actually. I mean, to me that my my explanation for that would be like what people complain about isn't always an accurate representation of what's bothering them. Like sometimes oh, complaints, yeah. sometimes, yeah, you know, that, but. Yeah, I get that. I don't know. Uh, I think we're going to learn a lot in this process. And what do you think was bothering them? Well, I would imagine that there's like some increased level of just, you know, ambient stress in the air, shitting mm -hmm. in a bucket. Uh, well, no, yeah. but right now, when, when there are facilities for not shitting in a bucket. Oh, 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 oh. Um, I don't know. I'd have to think about it, you know. Uh, I kind of don't get it because it's like it's still like eight hours. We never worked more than like really eight hours a day, mm -hmm. except, but it just got so um, so tough after some time. I mean, it's tough Which... for me because I wasn't there, but I would imagine that um, – I'm just using my experience in the military. Like, if you, I noticed a, a change in motivation level when people felt like there was a start, middle, and end to what they were doing. Uh, there was a, yeah, yeah, it's psychological. Yeah, yeah, the where so, is psychological. It's not. Right. It's affected by the creature comforts, but I would say the larger fraction of it is psychology. And that on one side, you can address that by recruiting different profile of person. And also clarifying, uh, clarifying the psychology, like the clarity, that, yes. you know, what you said, beginning, middle, end. Yeah, exactly. 
um, which is, I think, part of the power of a apprenticeship program. Um, they, there's just enough structure. Yeah. yeah, just enough structure. There's a clear endpoint and goal. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so regarding, the only thing I can say is um, any any possible work that, do you have any ideas of what, uh, what you could do that, that I'm not a hang up <laughs> right now? Uh, but the only thing, I, my suggestion would be like what I mentioned last week was was search for people that we're inviting to the first build, which is we want to get a, invite 30 people, have 24 show up, uh, 30 or more, reach out to a bunch of people. But I don't know, what do you, what do you feel like doing or what, have the energy or inspiration to do? Um, one second, I'm just ready after this. Uh for my wiki because you've converted me. Um, well, I mean, connecting you with the Habitat for Humanity, I think is the immediate goal. So so mm -hmm. closing the loop on that and, and maybe get, helping guide that discussion the same way I did with Brian. Um, mm -hmm. You know, in terms of other work I could be doing right now, um, I'll have to think about it. I don't have a great answer right now. Um, in terms of like the marketing and recruiting participants for the first build, um, Instagram and Twitter posts are cheap for me in terms of time and energy. And so like, there's no reason I can't put more photos up and hey, like this is coming. Uh, are you prepared? Uh, TBD, you know, spring 2022. Um, but there's still a lot of unanswered questions, I think, to, to convert that into people emailing. I mean, like I've got six subscribers right now to the newsletter, the OSE newsletter I have on the website, as opposed to two that I had a month ago. And so we could just try and continue that level of growth and awareness um, gradually, if, that, if that's what you wanted, you know, if that's what makes sense. More teasers, if you will. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't have any anything specific. I think um, regarding the actual recruiting of people to show up, only thing we can have is a conversation on that. But I think that would be the that's the number one thing because um, you can get the awareness out there. But I think it's um, it's specifications for who we need, like more of that. Just the the recruiting part, like what are we actually saying and what qualities are we filtering for if any if anything or are we just letting pretty much most people come in pending i mean the, the absolute requirement is there's some skill set so yeah. we're not working with training people it's we've got people that know how to do stuff so the the focus is on how do we coordinate not how do how how does a person do a task sure <clears throat> yeah yeah um okay i'll, I'll think about it um because i just so, something else i had another idea you know I, i've been we've been talking to travis uh brungart the the contracting kc um there's a, also a potential that we sort of leverage his connections and other builders in the area in a way that yeah. you know yeah. says like i just need to send this out to your subs just tell them they need to be ready to follow instructions for this first build um so like there's there's a couple of angles we could you know in addition to open recruiting. Yeah, let's let's get that conversation going. Like let's talk about okay, workforce. Uh, what access does he have? What suggestions he might have since he's in the field on it? Does he have a team himself? How many people does he have? Uh, I believe it's it's right now technically just him and his partner and subs. Yeah, I mean maybe a conversation on on how he how he gets to labor for his, but, but the thing is, that's why construction takes six months per house because that's what people do and that's not our game. So maybe yeah. he has good answers, maybe not. Um, cause we're in not six months, we're 2.6 days. Right. <laughs> I don't know. Wait, I, I've been thinking recently, like, what do we think that the, the big milestone hundred X, what, what do we think the milestone is going to be? to trigger active recruiting. And, and in my mind, it's finalized plans that are stamped by the 
Yeah, it, it is true. It's true. In which case we can <clears throat> we don't have much, much right now. It's bottlenecked quite a bit. Um, yeah, I don't have a clear answer on anything and how to get this technical phase right now, technical and build out. Um, don't have a clear answer on that one because it, from my side, because it's a very specific product, it needs some heavyweight product management. And I don't have a substitute for me who knows the process. Yeah. So I think uh. we, we kind of, uh, which is, which is part of the process. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, um, yeah, my, um, my gut says that we're right where we need to be given our constraints. Um, and maybe mm. that's the answer right now. Maybe the answer is as much as you can dedicate yourself only to the product, like it's like you have it, maybe success right now is mitigating, you know, distractions. Um, is it all? Yeah. Yeah. Us? Yeah. Perhaps uh, you might be right on that. Cause um, I mean, on the ground it's, it's out there and it's, it's cold as hell. Nobody's going to show up right now. That's for one thing. And so, yeah, just focusing my energy to, to be out there <clears throat> as much as I can, but at the same time, documenting a lot of stuff, which nobody does. Like I haven't seen anybody do this in process documentation, which is great. Cause then I can pass that right on to you and say, okay, John, clean this up or right. other people. Hey, let's clean this up. Let's make this into a product. Let's package this. Right. But for now it's, I mean, the thing that we're still doing is there's still experimentation happening like okay how do you actually do this how do you do that utility panel between the bathroom and kitchen that's not been built yet there's still like i'm still problem solving which which is one of those points where it's like it's the most frustrating time trying to lead somebody because because it's like there's a significant level of problem solving so unless someone's got deep experience in this uh, they can't help right and I'm not sure we can really afford anybody to to help right now i mean uh, we don't have that person, and yeah, it's it's both in terms of finding or or um, trying to get that person. But I I, I do see uh, I do see clear light ahead of the in a tunnel. That that's clear. It's around the corner. It's not not too far away. I think the first build is going to be. We got to plan more like for the middle of the year, uh, still within schedule. We'll see if uh, uh, if I can do this by February first here. Uh, as far as having pretty much everything done, but it's it's tight because it's already like January. What do we got? We got three weeks left. Um, I mean, it's it's it, it it's is tight. possible to rush to to failure. I think I think I think getting it right is much more important than getting it fast at this point. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I, I'm I'm pretty clear that yeah. I mean, we got to be out when we're out there. We've got a full team, and we've got like if you ask yourself <clears throat> for a pre mortem. It's like, how do you guarantee to fail? Well, we don't have clear instructions. We don't have a team. Right. So if you don't have clear documentation, not a clear team, the documentation comes from doing it and then documenting and spending some time on that. Uh, at the point we have the full documentation in CAD, then you can spawn a whole bunch of other process. And I'd like to get you thinking too also about like, so the virtual walkthroughs, even the, the video game, the mass multiplayer online game. As soon as the, the full CAD model is there, we can actually look for that. I, I want to see that. It's part for training and part for engagement. Uh, I think this is just basically the mixed reality, the virtual world or the metaverse around this project. That's going to be, you know, the word metaverse. Yeah. It's like the yeah. digital copy of, yeah. Uh, that's going to be part of it. And that all comes out of the, the full CAD and, and full, full details. You can really go nuts after that. Yeah. So anyway, okay. um, uh, cool. only thing I can say is, I mean, you do have insight on psychology of people. Um, if you can put forth any guidelines regarding when we're actually reaching out, that would be useful. You know, how do we do that? And um, just a list of critical requirements and then secondary, like I think we got to prioritize, like the only thing I know right now, it's anybody goes, they just got to have skill because everything you really find out uh, you find out if they show up and how they work with you. Can they collaborate? That's that kind of stuff. You you really got to figure out only when you work with that person. Can right. they problem solve? Can they can they work as a team? And can they? Uh, how do they work under pressure? Do they still collaborate or do they crumble? Right. Okay. I'll I'll start. Oh, I've got a. Uh, 
page on the wiki, it's a character. It comes from the laws of human nature. Take a look at what character is. It's four things. Uh, <clears throat> wiki page, let me put the link in there. This is, this is cool because I'm formalizing all this stuff. Okay, what do you mean by character? Well, here it is. It's how do you handle adversity? It's more like ashes and diamonds and see that link. How do you adapt and work with others? That's collaborative literacy, patience and humility. And ability to learn growth mindset. So that's that's kind of I would say the four things we're selecting for. Um, I think that's that's that captures it pretty well. But I mean, there's, beyond that, there's a there's a morality implicit in this, but it's not listed. What is it? No, I, I'm saying this this assumes that there is like character and morality are synonymous or not synonymous, but complements to each other. Uh, be, like otherwise, character is just a description of somebody's state of mind or how they how they act in the world. And, and what's so, the morality? Yeah, well, that that's an open question. I mean, I, though I I don't know laws of human nature, but I would imagine that's like a deep philosophical problem for individuals to solve. Like everyone has their own priors about where morality and ethics come from. And so, like, I guess what I'm saying is, I think I can imagine a human being who has these four aspects of character and still be a bad person. No, oh, I didn't think about that. That's a good point. Uh, let me see that. Um, do I believe that? Mm. Um, ability to learn. Oh, man, I have a hard time thinking that. How? If you can work with others, patience, humility, ability to learn. I don't get it. Explain. Um, I mean, imagine imagine a group of psychopaths. Hmm. Maybe they could collaborate to work to, together because they're creating something evil. Maybe within that group they have patience and humility, but the they're ultimately driven to do something bad for the world. This this is like a wild, like hot take, hot take. Not not a lot of thought going into this, but um, you know, the at the end of the day, my only point mm. is is like we don't have to say on the form or the application or like in our marketing plan, we don't have to say that like you believe in helping mankind. But there should, I think we should uh, just keep in the back of our heads that like having a set of values or living according to a set of principles about mm. care, you know, uh, service or uh, increasing well-being and minimizing harm. Or so, I don't know. We, where, you know, wherever it may come from, however you would generalize it, mm. should be an additional ingredient that we look for. Mm, yeah, so maybe... Uh, adding that and that's really um, so it's about autonomy mastery purpose AMP you got to get amped up to the purpose part is something greater than yourself or relatedness psychopaths don't think about it they're very self-centered is there an exception to a to to an um, altruistic psychopath I don't think so those two don't not. go together right Maybe not. I could be so wrong. We gotta, too. It could be wrong. I mean, like maybe maybe your point is right. Like embedded in adapt and work with others is a some sort of moral compass because you can't do that yeah. genuinely. Yeah. And I'm sure whoever well, wrote laws of nature like already thought of that. Unnecessarily, because uh, actually I I'm almost to the end of the book and no, it's actually bring a good point. But I gotta tell you that the words ability like at least collaborative literacy now i added a link to collaborative literacy that is imbued with ethics of something much greater than yourself and because that's also distributive it, in there is distributive economics which is that's not psychopathic patience and humility humble um fake humility uh authentic humility would be uh 
that you really don't think so highly of yourself and you would really be altruistic or helping helping others of course after you take care of yourself yeah um, i mean i i hesitate to go there uh just for the sake of a deep philosophical conversation but like i feel like there are a lot of religious time periods in, of, of, of history that would have uh matched one through four that we now look upon mm. as really bad times of history, potentially, or bad groups of people within history by our standards today. Um, yeah. But growth mindset, uh, I think that the definition there is integrated, like, like growing, not just growing in your psychopathy, like you'd be an even better Stalin or whoever, uh, I'm, a, I'm becoming an even better Stalin or Hitler. <laughs> I mean, I, mean, uh, I don't uh, think that would qualify as growth mindset. I, I, I just, uh, a, a buddy of mine just wrote a, a paper for the army actually about morality and like, what's the, yeah. what's the ethical basis for joint doctrine. And his thesis is that the, it's currently based on anti-realism and the, world would be a better place if it was based on moral realism. And I haven't read the whole thing yet. Um, I'll send it to you. Uh, yeah. But I, I think it's, um, it's kind of where I'm going with this, which is that like moral morality has real world consequences that matter and define what is right and what is wrong. Um, mm -hmm. or, or what is right and what is wrong is based on real world consequences caused by morality, maybe. Um, yeah. At least that's my, my initial understanding. And so like I, I would... I don't know. I'd be interested to see see where the, that takes the discussion, like if it has a place on the wiki as a, you know, additional data. Yeah. What's your thought on the level of discipline for the apprenticeship? Because I've been thinking um, high expectations, discipline. It, it's kind of struck struck me yeah. that maybe we got to up that game. But what's your thought on it? Because I'm leaning towards, man, let's make this super disciplined where you go through hardship in a sense of breaking yourself down and building yourself up. What's your thoughts on this thing? What's the proper balance on this aspect? Cause man, it's like, um, you grow as far as how much you're willing to suffer and break your past patterns, which are really comfortable and they're very, lead to psychological suffering uh not not body suffering body we can take that but i think psychological is more more difficult uh, what's your <clears throat> thought on this i mean i think you covered a couple different uh topics like can you specify a little bit more of, of what my thought of what you're looking for okay so very strict discipline as in You've got an extremely well-defined program and dimensions that are found nowhere else. Things like landmark education, which actually some companies take. Just crazy shit, which pushes you to learnings on all kinds of fronts. So part of it is, okay, you're this. we're really teaching, we're spending half the time technical and half the time learning how to be a person, learn how to think, learn how to evaluate your mental models and uh, gain yeah. focus, which um, is huge discipline. Right. And that means we're going to be pushing people beyond their very normal thing. Like in school, you're not taught discipline. You got to do it because you got to crank out this paper. But unless you specifically ask for that, you don't cover any of this. And that's, I felt that was a great, miss in my education like right now i'm trying to say holy cow let's study how we learn and how we, we become people right i mean i i i tend my my initial reaction i don't even know if this is accurate to how i think generally like my initial reaction is that discipline is an emergent property or to, discipline is a constant risk reward calculation that people make on a day-to-day -day basis and it's kind of fueled by past experience and so like, you know, I keep going back to the military. You can make, you can take a bunch of 18 year olds off the street and send them to boot camp, and they'll be disciplined. But 
whether or not they're being disciplined because they fear negative consequences or they're disciplined because they know doing the right thing is is better for the themselves and others i think it's harder to 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 know ah good very good distinction okay and and so, so like do, mm. like to me the discipline that we want to see in in participants is really a i am motivated to always choose the hard right over the easy wrong because i see how these actions impact myself and others globally or in the long term and yeah. i am yeah. i'm making the world a better place by you know uh making the right decision in whatever the instance is and i think structure like the structure we impose on the apprenticeship plays a part in that but it is possible to be too rigid as you know and there is an important like develop personal growth that occurs by making small recoverable mistakes when it comes to um taking shortcuts and like i'm a perfect example of that like i failed college the first time i tried it i did because i wasn't disciplined and that was part of the reason and my ability to recover from that i think is why I'm probably a more disciplined person now than I was then. Um, and that was personal growth, right? And so um, that I think mm. generally that's sort of like how I would start the conversation. Um, if we're thinking about like how we want to structure the experience. Because like there's there's going to be, you're, I think what, what I'm hearing is like, you want to be able to push people outside their comfort zone to be better. And the other thing is I want to, I want this to be like, like when we go out there to the site, man, it's quality. Everything is orchestrated. None of this bullshit of leaving a mess or just fumbling well, around. Like <clears throat> this is just product. You want right? people, you want people to be proud of every screw they put in. You want them to take pride in the, in the work being yeah. plumb level and square. Right. And, and to have craftsmanship, right. Um, and, and the and that, coordination, the yeah. coordination, because it's going to require a huge level of coordination to pull <clears throat> right. off the kind of economic result, which is motivated by we're trying to solve housing. Damn it, yeah, we got to be good at this. Right, and the, I mean that's that's team building, that's being mission focused as an organization. That is how you speak to the people you work with, how you interact. Um, that's how you deal with dilemmas. I mean, there's a lot of ingredients to that that are aren't just discipline. Well, I'm kind of thinking like discipline. Yeah, that's. I'm kind of encompassing all of that in that word discipline. Mm -hmm. um, I guess maybe I should look up what that what the definition of that word is. But yeah. Give me a lot to think about. I'm gonna, um... Yeah, because I'm thinking it's like, man, part of this, I mean, uh, there's a beauty to the open source wild, wild west, but at a certain point when you got a ship, that's when you got to have the high coordination. Yeah, and you don't, yeah, kind you of don't stuff want enough. Yeah, the kind of stuff that's typical behavior, man, got to do better. <clears throat> right. I mean, I think it's enough. Uh -huh. I think it's enough raw ingredients to get somebody who cares about the big picture uh is motivated to grow um works well as a team right like I, I think there are certain basic ingredients that in the right environment will turn manifest as discipline pride uh you know craftsmanship uh, altruism whatever whatever other positive externalities you want to achieve um but we're going to learn. I mean, we're going to make mistakes with the first group. Yeah, yeah. And I look at myself because, I, I mean, I transitioned from, like, pissing on an entire system to accepting much more of it. Like, in my mud hut here, you know, in the early days and <laughs> that kind of stuff. Um, and I see that people kind of are pissed and they're scared. And I was like that, too. I was scared that the government is going to get me and stuff like that. Now I'm like, no, we run this shit. And... And that's the kind of transformation that we want to cultivate in people. I've seen it myself. That's why like, I think I'm 
might be a good person to teach it, but it's like, no, 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 we're, we're in charge here. It's like, it's only if you don't find your full power that you get scared. Right. And right now it's like, I'm less scared of less and less things. So that kind of internal growth is necessary for people to transition from like hating on a system to feeling that, man, we're just running this thing and we're creating what we need to do for the benefit of everybody. So yeah, that kind of a breakthrough, like from in my life, it's been an absolute breakthrough, man. Um, and that's what I'd like to like to share. And we act on it's it beautiful. and our actions speak. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Um, <clears throat> I think there are, I, I think that's, uh, that's a noble pursuit, honestly. I mean, like, like if you do, if you accomplish nothing else other than give people the environment to go on that journey, I mean, that's mm -hmm. a huge accomplishment. Oh yeah. 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 And that way, like if they leave OSC or they stay, those skills are, I mean, that's relevant. Like I was thinking about, okay, the, the program, and as I'm focusing more to human humanistic development, it's like, well, whether you take that somewhere else or stay here, you, the world is going to be a better place. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so I, I guess what I'm hearing is, uh, if I just go back to the ground we covered so far, um, you know, when you get a chance, you'll send me the second trap, the EV. I'm going to start thinking about the strategy for how we select the right people. Um, yeah. And, you know, beyond that, I think you're using your time the best way you possibly can right now. Um, Tali goes back to daycare on Monday, so I'll have a little bit more flexibility after that. I'm also, I'm meeting with Richard on Monday as well, so I'll get a chance to talk to him. I'll close the loop on the Habitat for Humanity so we can have a meeting with their office. Um, Richard from Habitat? No, R Richard Henniger, the veteran I connected oh, to. Oh, Richard. With. Yeah. Oh, meeting in person or on, on like... we, we have a monthly check. Oh, cool. So I'll see how his finals went last year and, and uh, see where his head's at for visiting. Um, yeah, so I, I'm happy to call it here. I feel good. Um, I don't know if there's anything else you want to talk about. Okay. Ask for Habitat. The Habitat question is, are they interested? Is any others? Um, ideal thing there's, so they've got a big name and they're growing. So it would be cool. They do traditional stuff. So if there's a progressive thinker there, the, my personal goal would be, is somebody interested in optimized building? Uh, yeah. Construction well, that based modular building. I mean, they're, they absolutely are because, um, that's essentially how they, they get done is to sell a version of that rapid quality house construction. Habitat's huge. There is a KC office. I considered cold calling them, but I'm going to start with my, the, the person I have the connection with um, and go from there. Um, like at the end of the day, they're valuable to me from the sense of they have experience doing rapid coordination with inspections and permits and swarm builds i mean i think i think yeah. a, a, a yeah. an open question for all of us here is like why isn't the habitat model for profit because they've already they've already proven at scale you can build a house in two days or whatever using volunteer labor how where where i mean that that's their model they, they, I'm pretty sure like every house they build is, is a matter of like two days of actual labor. They have like 50 or 60 volunteers doing it. And so where do you get that? Where do you get that? That's the first time I hear of that. A person, uh, I mean, the guy who connected me to Habitat for Humanity volunteered on the project or volunteered on the home build. Tell me more. Like, what are they doing? I, I, I participated in one. It was a regular build in months. Really? Okay. So, so maybe, uh, I mean, maybe I got it wrong. Maybe, I, maybe that was back. That was back in 1993 or something. Oh yeah. No, it's, it's but, much, much more efficient. Now. Okay. Well, I mean, if that's the case, then, oh yes. And then here's our prints and workflows and let's compare right. now getting to 
incremental improvements. Right. I mean, I mean I, I, I'd be surprised if if you tell me that, it's tell me more because I don't know of anybody who's close to what we're doing okay. in terms of pace. Well, they're, they're doing this with, uh, actually, you know what? I think I know what the, the difference is. I think the difference is that they show up with a lot of stuff pre-built. Yeah, it depends. I mean, if they have standard models, if, if that's the case, then maybe then uh, we should be using their designs if it's actually that good. But uh, I'd be pleasantly surprised. And the other thing is, um, note, there's also Church in a Day where they build a church in 24 hours. That's that's a known project, Church in a Day. But it's not what we do. It's it's 100 professionals. So right. I mean, that's different, which is kind of what we're saying to do saying we're, we're going to do right now we're going to get people who actually know how to build from different disciplines but not explicitly those specialists right um but the same technique once once optimized we can use like you know 10 percent professionals and 90 percent non-professional that's kind of that would be the model but yeah that's well, which is which I, I would say significant because then you're talking to block parties so we go to Kansas City, Kansas, and we build the, the block, uh, an entire block with local people. That's that's the difference. And that's important, right? Right. right, right, right. Um, well, I, I mean, let me close. Let me set up the meeting and we can ask these questions. Yeah, yeah. And the actual real answers. I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, just ask them again. That should be a quick deal. Like, I, I want to evaluate what, what, what they're doing, because I mean, that's that's exactly uh, part of it is that we it's hard to communicate the value proposition because people are not recognizing that we're building from scratch. This is not right. pre-built. Right. This is, right. So we're saying 10x to 100x over industry standards. <laughs> right. uh, so so if someone's close to that, uh, I'd like to know more. I mean, that that's probably, uh, again, it doesn't matter because we're going to talk to them, but it, I would guess yeah. there's probably a lot of uh, material and expertise that is not priced in because it's there's a lot of donations and so that's i'm guessing that's why like whereas we're bypassing a lot of that with everything you do. yeah yeah no the devil's in the details and and but that's that's exactly what i'm saying let's compare notes exactly what techniques we're using what can we learn from them and um do we have something to offer them and right. that'll be the discussion but I never got into this kind of a discussion. No, and, uh, maybe because we never had a product. <laughs> All right, uh, I'll do that now. All right. All right. All right, John. Well, this is great. Thanks. Take yep. care. Yep. Bye. Bye. Bye.